This week on Hermitcraft. Today, ladies and gentlemen, is the 10th anniversary of Hermitcraft. It's been going since uh, 2012, so... So now we can add 10 years in the making to literally anything they do. Welcome to the Hermitcraft Recap, my name is Pixel Rift, our writer is Loy XP. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. We strongly encourage you not to base any drinking games on how much we say the word egg in this video. While the Easter egg hunt dominated the week and provided some of the best giggles so far this season, we aren't going to spend time listing all the places eggs were hidden and found because that would take all day. But it's well worth going to each Hermit's Easter videos to watch them gasp, groan, laugh and cheer at how creatively sneaky everyone has been. As for results, I, Jevins got them all calculated. We'll hold off on telling you, but the short version is that Hermit's tied for first place will have a separate competition for the cup. And with all that out of the way, let's take a look at all the events and mishaps that occurred on the Hermitcraft server this week. Starting with Hypnoteg, who has just recently picked out a spot at that Podzol place, only to immediately discover a skeleton spawner under it. Real good stuff here, guys. Mm -hmm. For it to not go to waste, Hypno rigs it up into a farm with a cozy interior and an enchantment set up adjacent. The extra bone meal will certainly help, seeing how Hypno decided to collect as many bee nests as he can, and that's not bee hives, bee nests, naturally generated in the world, or appearing with birch trees at like 5% probability, meaning that he's planting birch after birch without even harvesting the wood some of the time. To what end? We will probably find out. Until then, the bragging rights are reason enough. Now, I've never played with bees in vanilla Minecraft before. Just maybe, there might be somebody out there who wants bees nests, maybe for some kind of a decoration block. Though as far as self-imposed challenges go, we can't avoid mentioning Zegdaf. This week in the Why You Doing This series, Zed wonders how many mobs or entities he can stack up on one another. The regular boat in a minecart trick is of course here, but then we up the count with striders riding striders, and before long, even B Double Egg ends up somewhere in the mob pile. Let's recap here a second, we have a minecart, with a boat yeah. in it, with two striders, with striders riding the striders. We are then going to hop on top of the top striders with our parrots on our shoulders and be <gasps> the biggest stack of things you can ever imagine. It's also quite funny how buying beacons for all the beacon bases he planned exhausts the base for the diamond one. Hmm, what do you think for an elytra? Want... Anything under three <laughs> diamond blocks would be great. Um... <laughs> <laughs> All the while, Egrian and Good Egg with Scar are having a competition placing all the diamond ore they have in a pillar to show off. Pearl Egg St. Moon even joins in and dominates, as she tends to do. We also get the joy of Egrian naming all his Easter egglets Greg, while Scar actually names all of them according to places he hit them with jokes and puns and everything. <laughs> Mayhaps Jevin's whole event pulled some subliminal messaging on him because we see Grian start his primary base, and it's a kind of a rock egg, just mossed up and nicely textured. Naturally, he names it Dwayne. And this was put together, actually, in the first week of this season on my private server. I've, I've actually got way more than this planned. And then further down the line, there's even more islands and floating stuff. Uh, trust me, this is going to be a really cool base. Scar, in the meantime, is adding the extra touch to their shared project, the Trading Hall ship. He crashes it. It wasn't even going anywhere. No, the destruction of the container vessel is to do with the storm Scar builds out of glass over the micro-ocean they made to prevent spawns. The vortex comes down onto the deck and the cargo goes flying. The effect took hours of librarian trading, but it sure is worth it. Though this does finish the trading hall project, and next up, Scar has to hold up his side of the promise to grow a cookie empire out of it, especially now that Pearl helped him take down the cookie monster from the top of his house. There's a new petrified tree with a building under it, but that may not be enough to switch a server hooked on golden carrots to baked goods. In the meantime, the HQ covers up neatly the entirety of Exumavoid's house. That in itself is a tall order now that Exuma, the easiest of these pun names by the way, has encased his iron farm in a clock tower thus completing another whole wing of his house with no interior, but some denizens at least. Said denizens are dying in lava non-stop. Poetic justice is him getting stuck in Cub's cactus farm later. So, oh, okay. um, come come okay, rate this one, it? okay? You're gonna get a freebie okay. here. But how good of a hiding spot is that? Uh, that's really good. That's really good on the back side here. Also, yeah. it blends in with the color too, so you got that oh, going for you. Oh, yeah. 
So, Cubfan185, work with me people, they aren't all gonna be winners, has been filling Scar's basement with all sorts of gizmos from the aforementioned cactus farm, to glow lichen micro farm, to moss farm, to an interior for the whole shebang. And we certainly would never, after all of this, continue to put secret entrances into Hermit's bases, except that we totally have. And my goodness, that was smooth. But the most wondrous of them is the secret attachment cub installed at the smelter in Scar's house, siphoning some of the cooked materials. Thing is, not only does Scar notice it, he then fills the thing with glazed terracotta of the arrow kind. But speaking of exciting things people have been finding, the eggs, yes, they've been found, but also b castle has been discovered. False Symmetreg made her way to his parkour challenge, as do a couple of other members, though False has her own castle to fill in at the mountain getaway. The Egg Hunters sure lucked out into her not having it up for the event yet, the place promises to be absolutely massive compared to the Starter Eagle. Either way, between the two events, False is just really good at finding stuff this week. And honestly, I had so much fun doing that. I'm not a massive fan of parkour, I can just about do it, but uh, it's it's not that exciting for me. But honestly, this one was so much fun, I very, very, very much enjoyed it. All of the excitement even brings back Shell's Knight, who comes back for the second episode of the season, but already has house enough to hide a full baker's dozen in. Of course, it's not just the egg hunt that he comes back for. Along the way, his starter home gets a nicer front lawn, and Shells laments the lack of a flower shop on the server since the tulips would just look nicer in the planter boxes. Just basically going, flying around the plains and just grabbing flowers until I had enough to fill up. Zombie Cleomlet has a garden of a different kind. In her ruins, she builds up a diorama of monochrome Hermitcraft members meant to represent stone versions of them, petrified by the Gorgon inhabiting the Fallen Palace. And I do it again. Cleo actually kept her egg hiding till the last minute. Not entirely intentional, but who's counting? The things she does on purpose, however, are a bit of a nightmare. When Jeg Hills has discovered that his axolotl cave produces tropical fish in perpetuity, it doesn't take much to make it into a fountain. And it's one thing that they made a hole in the ground spewing fish into a tourist attraction, it's another entirely that they both decided to make ASMR out of the flappy fish sounds it produces. And uh, nature is healing, we, we need to be very clear. Rendog is back on the server, having returned from recharging his emotional batteries with family in South Africa, and we'd be calling him Rendeg or even Regdog if he hadn't shown up a few days late for the Easter event. As it is, he barely has time to log on before Doc Egg 77 invites him over for a catch-up and requests that he bring over 3,000 pumpkins. You brought the pumpkins anyway, see? That's true friendship. <laughs> in exchange, Doc offers him all the deep slate and diamonds he can scrounge in the wake of the trenching flying machine, and shows him to his new Lamborghini. Okay, bye. Oh my goodness! <laughs> La Llama Rail! After sweeping his village for egg-shaped hermits and finding several of them hiding in the knees of his villagers, Doc decides it's time to lift the lid on his inventory-sinking poppy technology glitches, since the technical community is pretty sure they've been patched out for good in the upcoming 119 update. But it's bought Doc enough time to work on his World Eater, and with the trenches now dug, the real war on the terrain begins. With a time lapse and a couple of cuts, he set up a TNT dropping flying machine, a liquid sweeper to dispose of water and lava, and a return mechanism that shifts it down a block each time it hits the opposite side of the area. Now all that's left is for him to switch it on and play a game of Space Invaders which the ground is going to lose. Eggs Be Crafted stashes his weebles in a variety of artful places, but while they might wobble but not fall down, he's determined to do just that. Setting up a quick and dirty phantom farm so he can brew slow falling potions, he retrofits Keralis' dropper prank with actual minigame technology. Instead of an explosive crash pad, he sets up a pufferfish detector in the center of the platform, and your points only count if it inflates and sets off the fireworks. To beta test this, he enlists someone who falls professionally. Is that where I die? You shouldn't die. <laughs> <laughs> Back at the base, before he finds it littered with the eggs of his friends, XB builds his own take on a deep dark ancient city structure with the intent to turn it into a storage area, complete with hidden lighting and enough chests to keep him satisfied for a while. His own egg hunt goes well, but his exact base location turned out to be tricky for some people to find, so he eventually throws in the towel upon realising some folks may just have stashed the eggs in the deeper branches of barely explored caves. <laughs> it's been a long day. It's been a long day. Joe Heggs aims for the right balance of challenge and funny with the placement of his eggs, although the spot behind Wells Knight's house may have been chosen by the Minecraft equivalent of an act of God. Now, what is that? So there's an eternal flame cascade behind Wells Knight's house. You know what? Maybe let's just believe, let's just trust in the eternal flame. Uh, oh no! 
When the search begins for the eggs other hermits have hidden around his house and the accompanying cave, he discovers that some of them teleport through blocks, but despite this, he tracks down all 18 in record time and even gets a prismarine party bag from Jem for helping out with the Guardian farm. You know, how, 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 how much longer could it possibly take? Impulse Eggs V is one of the last people to collect and place his eggs, but that doesn't mean he gets any less creative. He's got to get creative over at his industrial district too, since his expanded and decorated bamboo and sugarcane farm threatens to crash the server if he doesn't create some storage for it all. Oh yeah, so we're we're just burning items. We may have went over the top with this farm. The server might have other problems though. After selling Zenaf all 12 of his beacons, he flies back in the direction of the Wither Skeleton farm, only to find that the nether has been transplanted by sections of the end dimension in the latest chunk purge. We have it on good authority that this is now fixed, but at least Tango could lend him a handful of skulls in the meantime. And perhaps we can blame the tear in the fabric of reality for the fact that Impulse discovers a carefully crafted battle axe in a dungeon chest and finds himself transformed into a dwarf. <laughs> Look at me now! Okay, okay, now, now we are truly living the dwarvish life. When Iskal85 signed up for the Easter event, he intentionally built hiding places into his base, hoping some people would take the bait. And while some of the eggs are more shrewdly placed, Iskal is satisfied when a few of his server mates fall for it. Oh, 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 my traps have been successful two out of three. Falling was also the only option Iskel had when navigating his cave base, but he takes some time to work on the flow of the place, creating staircases and paths from platform to platform, and terraforming the lush cave clay beds into a series of man-made outcroppings. Vinteg Beef is one of the first to lay eyes on the tragedy of the Guppy Geyser. Oh no! Oh, no. no, 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 this is terrible! I don't want to see this happen. But that aside, he's doing pretty well out of the wool shop now, which affords him the time to actually decorate his starter house at spawn so there are places for the hermits to conceal things. Nobody wants to go to the effort of sneaking their egg into his card game via the medium of map art, after all. Having worked on a diamond sword card for the PvP types and an eye of ender for the speedrunners, he takes some time to hide his own beefster eggs around the other bases, then circles back to his own house and finds everyone else's aside from Azuma's. That is so good. Hold on, hold on. Look at how adorable. Oh, I can't take those off. Dang, <laughs> that was the worst mistake I've ever. Streg Monster joins the established tradition of hiding her eggs in other people's chests, although she gets points for originality and just for making us laugh with some of these. Is it going to show if I put it with the little geezers here? <laughs> Let's do it. Hang on. <laughs> Her own hunt for the eggs hidden around her base takes place in flashback form, because afterwards she spends some time unifying all the builds in the Dark Oak Forest she's claimed as her base, clear-cutting an area around them, terraforming a new hill under her acorn house, connecting the area with organic-feeling paths, and adding scenic waterfalls to the landscape. And while she's filling her basket with eggs, Stress also gets to collect the profits Gemini Tay has set aside from their Guardian farm. Pearl Excent Moon came here to win right from the start, as we saw when she and Zedaf made the first moves to sign up. I'm, I'm just saying it's dead. I'm gonna win this, all right? You're not, you're not winning this how, prize pool. How dare you, Pearl? It's on. And regardless of the outcome, we're the real winners because we get all the hilarious shenanigans of Egg Pearl trying to spy on Grian from an armor stand. It's it even creepier. That lowered the whole thing. I think I prefer it with the eyes a little bit up, not gonna lie. Elsewhere, of course, Pearl has just put down a land claim on a hill with Gem and Impulse as her neighbors. She explains that she plans to continue the alien vibe she started over at Spawn, with the aliens and humans cohabiting in a combination of surface and underground dwellings. But to truly live up to her vision for it, she'll need a lot of terracotta, and that means she'll need a beacon. So she petitions Tango for one, but to her surprise, he asks for a slightly unconventional form of payment. Maybe like we set up a deal where for every resource you want to gather with a beacon. Uh-huh. You sing me a song. Um. I said go. Oh no. Tango, hello, I'm just here for a beacon because terracotta is really needed. I need When a mysterious observer appears inside his base, B double egg suspects his tower might be trapped. But with April Fools over and done with, turns out it all leads to something that feels more sinister. His investigations lead him to an altar with a strange plant, which a nearby book identifies as the Seed of Whimsy and insists it should never be replanted in sunlight. So B-Dubs immediately digs a hole on a nearby hill and shoves it in the ground. After hiding his eggs, he meets up with Zedaf, who asks him to play Jenga with mobs. Oh my goodness! And by the time he returns to spawn, the seed has grown into a magnificent birch tree. 
B-Dubs plans to do any future dungeon-related dealings under the boughs of this tree, including furnishing Tango Teg with a parkour crown for his success at the Ruins Parkour Challenge. And I dub thee. I'm so excited. The parkour <gasps> king <laughs> of the server. <laughs> yeah, baby. It's not the bejeweled treasure exactly, but Tango got a shipment of gold coming through every minute thanks to a Nembon designed nether roof gold farm. In fact, the design will only get better rates as Tango clears out what little of the spawn sphere landed within the actual nether. And finally, there's Egg Jevin, who announces the winners of the contest. Darn it. Here are the final scores. Coming in at first is Green, Azuma, and Hypno. Ty, that way we have a little bit of extra content because it's going to be a lot of fun to do the final Easter egg hunt. Since several people tied for first, Jevin promises to set up a final hunt to settle the dispute. Really, all he has to do is sneak the eggs into his new oversized sugarcane farm, and that's a month or so before anyone finds them. The thing is so big it lags him well out as soon as the harvesting lever is pulled. So it just cumulative. I can't say that word. Cumulative. I can't say it. Lucky that the thing is not an automatic, so it's safe from the lag sphere of doom. Now if Mumbo just stays in Grian's Rift, the server will be safe. Speaking of obscure throwbacks to previous seasons, Jevin says he never built boardwalks before, but I could swear he did have a seaside fort sometime in season 4 or 5. He also blew that one up though, and he sure didn't build it like that. This is certainly a more picturesque take on the concept, and thank god for the humble spruce trapdoor. And that's about it for this week's Egg Cup. Our writer is Loy XP, and my name is Pixel Riffs. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to our channel so you won't miss future recaps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.